Hi, my name is Brian LeBlanc, and I'm an Applications Engineer for Hawkridge Systems. Today we're going to be looking at SOLIDWORKS Inspection Standalone, specifically the Measurements Input feature contained in the professional version of SOLIDWORKS Inspection. Now, if you don't see the Measurement Input window down here, you want to go to the Options and make sure that under the General Options, Measurements Input and CMM Data Import is checked on. This, of course, is only available to be active when you have the professional version of SOLIDWORKS Inspection. And what I'm going to be talking about today are all the options that are in the measurements input. What happens when you change all of these around? So first, let's get an actual value to measure. Let's take this 1.500. Now, the general options for our project state that plus minus tolerance is 0 0.005. We can change that in the options. So that would equate to an upper limit of 1.505 and a lower limit of 1.495. Now let's say we manufacture this part for real, we take it, we measure that dimension, we get 1.500, that's right on the money. Green, that's good. Now if I hit this arrow down, I can enter more values. This would represent measurements on the same part. Maybe I take it, I measure it again, 1.510. That is of course much larger than our 1.505 upper limit. Now, what we're representing here is the average of the two because in our options, that's the option we've selected, average case. You'll also notice that the box is yellow, signifying it is a marginal pass. The determination whether that's pass, fail, or marginal would indicate uh, is residing in here in this pass, fail zone. Now, anything within 80% of the upper and lower limit tolerancing, so namely, we have a tolerance of 0 0.005, 80% of that is 0 0.004. That means our range between all the way pass uh, is 1.496, to 1.504. Anything between those values is pass. Anything outside those values but still within the upper and lower limit is marginal. So that would stand to say if I change this to 100%, we only have pass fail. Maybe I don't want any marginal results, I only want pass fail. Well the average is now still 1.505, but it is right at the upper limit. So we still get a pass because we have a 100% pass zone. We change that back. So these percentages here, that just determines the opacity and transparency of the shaded values. So if I want all failures to be fully 100% red blackout, I can do 100%. If maybe more applicably for the unspecif unspecified values, I don't want any gray shading, I just wanted to have the normal white background, I can change that there as well. So let's also look at some of these other measurements displays. I have a couple measurements in the same part, 1.5, 1.51. Maybe I just want to show the worst case. That was 1.51. Now it's only taking that into account. It's red. Maybe I want to show the worst and best case. Now there's only two, so that's all we're going to see. Let's add another one, 1.505. We'll keep the average the same, just so it doesn't mess with any of our numbers. But we're only showing best case and worst case. Um, and it's only going to take uh, that worst case and then give us the end result. Now, if we add another column, this would represent that we've made a second part, and we're going to measure this. Let's just say 1.51. We'll put that outside the tolerance. So 1.51, right, change that to average. Of course, the average is the same. There's only one value. And so we can have some different results going on, right? For part one, we have an average 1.505. It's marginal. Part two, 1.51. Now the graphic highlighting in the actual drawing, that will only apply to one specific column. So we're either going to look at part one or part two, because these are representing two separate parts. Now if we've got uh, some notes, let's say we want to take this note and these aren't going to have any real values. This one is either going to be pass or fail. So we could type in pass, we could type in fail, or we could type in marginal. And the determination of whether these are highlighted in what we type in 
is, again, here in the options, pass, marginal, or fail. So maybe our nomenclature, we'd rather have good, OK, and bad. That's fine. So now I, this, was, this would represent good, bad, you know, based on the actual part if I really need it. So the final thing here is, what happens when we export? How do we want our, our document to look? So if we say, apply color to fill, and then show me all the values, let's see what that looks like currently. You'll notice we have a template for measurement export. expert. Let's use that one. Let's see what this looks like currently. So we've got our cells highlighting the appropriate good marginal or fail uh, color. And then right now we're showing all values. We've got three values here, just one value here. Let's change the options and say, let's just show the values as described by this box up here. So what this is actually calculating the, the good, bad, or fail rate on. And then let's just see what this looks like. Display color to cell font. Export to Excel. Then let's see our results. All right, so now in this column, we just see the value either worst case, worst case, best case, or in this case, average case. And we only see the font in the highlighted color. So for this one, you know, font in yellow is really hard to see. We probably don't want that option. But maybe for another proje project, it would be more applicable. Or maybe we'll make a different template so that we can see that or something. OK, so today we looked at some of the options for the measurements input feature that is in the SOLIDWORKS Inspection Professional. Thanks for watching.